Hello, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm an artist, and I bit my subject. <laughs> I wanted to paint one piece of chocolate this time. This is my second of my chocolate videos. I paint it in both gouache and watercolor and continue the conversation we started in the last video about how your art does not need to be perfect and tidy when your nose is right up on top of it. In that video, I did a whole box of chocolates and it's from a printed image. So you can go and purchase the printed image and just color right on top of it. You can paint it with gouache, use markers, pencils, whatever you want. But I showed you how messy my coloring is until you pull back from it. And I wanna talk a little bit more about that in this video by doing a single piece of chocolate. So let's get going on that. I began by biting my subject, which, you know, I'm taking one for the team. Happy to take a bite of chocolate for you. This photo is on my blog if you'd like to download it and paint it up yourself. But I bit into it and then I let my teeth drag on it so that I would end up with that kind of drippy sort of look of caramel because this was not the gooey kind necessarily. So I had to kind of pull. And then in Photoshop, I added a black background because I love me some drama. And you can go get that photo for free if you would like to uh, paint it up yourself. I'd love to see what you create if you do. So in gouache, what I have been learning in my oil painting class is to try to start with the darks and work toward lights. I am a watercolorist. I paint from lights to darks. It's just completely the opposite thinking. Here I decided to separate the caramel and the chocolate at least and not really worry about the dark value in the caramel yet. And for the chocolate portion, I mixed a little tiny bit of white into the color that I used for the chocolate and made it a little bit lighter so I could start defining some of the drips that go across the chocolate, just little by little. It's gonna add a whole lot more later, but this just at least gets those things set. And as gouache dries, it dries differently. Some colors dry darker, some colors dry lighter. So I moved on to start putting in some of the general shapes in the center, in the caramel. Now, when you're painting something like this or drawing or whatever, it, it's a complicated shape and your brain tells you, I need to make this look like caramel. But what you need to tell your brain and train your brain to start to think and to see is in shapes and values. When you see in shapes and values, you start not worrying about whether or not it looks like caramel right now. Because otherwise you're going to be telling yourself, I don't know how to paint caramel. I don't know how to make it look drippy. I don't know. And you're going to get lost in that thought train. And you need to just pick a shape, whichever one you're going to paint next, just pick one and look at what the value is and paint it. Now, starting with your darks is good, but here in the caramel, I had started with that lighter yellow ochre type of uh, color and value. And then I started putting in some of the medium shape, medium colored shapes, medium darks. And then I went in with the very darks. The reason I did that was because I was trying to separate the caramel into zones so that I could look at just a smaller zone instead of focusing on the entire blob of caramel. So there's a little hangover ledge at the top and then a hangover ledge at the bottom. So just the way that the caramel separated in in the, the bite that I took. And then I could work on each of those sections individually and not have to really stress over trying to think through the entire thing at once. I could think of about just a tiny portion of it. At this point, I realized I probably should have put my background in so that the drips could be painted over top of it. I am terrible at painting a nice smooth background in light colors. I can do it in darks, but in lights, I struggle with that. So you'll see me mess with the shadows underneath here and there. Once I at least got this much established, I now have that shelf at the top that has a couple sections to it that hang down. Then I took my yellow ochre color which is kind of the original color plus a tiny, tiny bit of white to brighten it a little bit and started adding in all of the little textures 
that are hanging off that top shelf. And then I started doing it at the bottom, just working through one little section at a time, not stressing about the entire thing. And when you're doing a macro view of something like this, this is a super important thing to train yourself to see. Because if you start thinking too much about the big picture, you'll get lost in it. So look little by little at tiny sections and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this shape and what is the shape of it and how thick is it? How, how does it relate to the shape that's already next to it? And I started seeing things like the chocolate almost separating from the caramel in certain places. There's really dark areas right next to the caramel where the caramel and the chocolate join, almost as if there's a separation between them. And just noticing those tiny things is what's going to make it look realistic as you start painting. So here I am trying again with the background. I was debating whether I was going to make those little rivulets in the insert from the Valentine's chocolate box. And I, I would try it. I would let it dry and then it would dry terribly. And then I would try it again. Yeah, that's just how I work in gouache. We're trying to do all that stuff. I was enjoying the chocolate much more than I did the shadow background. But while that dried, I started brightening up the caramel. So there's some areas where it's yellowish and almost orangey. And depending on how the photograph is lit, it can be all sorts of colors in there. And at one point in here, I actually pulled an orange into my browns to try to brighten them up because I was looking for both the value, I wanted it to be the right mid-tone. And I think of the mid-tones in terms of, you know, is it a 30% tint of whatever that original color would have been? Or is it like an 80%? And that's, that's how I kind of think through the values. And as I start painting, there's a lot of times I'll paint a few strokes of something that I thought I mixed properly. And then it goes on the paper and I'm like, oh, that's too bright. And then I go back and I mix in something darker. So it's constantly going back and forth to my palette to figure out exactly what value I'm going to need to paint that tiny section, that, that little bit. And I don't get to a pure white until the very end, if at all. Sometimes you don't even need a pure white. Sometimes just a white with a, a little tiny hint of yellow in it is going to be what you need. Now here's where the background made a big difference because you can see the color of the chocolate is bloodstone and the color of the background is a, an actual black, one of the Jane's blacks. And that's where it starts kind of making the difference between the two. You see the separation. And then I can go back and tidy up the outside edges of the chocolate against that black. And then if I paint too much of that, I can go back in and paint some black around it. And I love that, that you can constantly fuss around with gouache and, you know, make little changes to it. I wanted to warm up the chocolate a little bit instead of being such a cold color. So I added a little bit more to it. And it's just a process little by little of changing things up so that it starts getting the roundness that I'm looking for. And I always wait for it to dry before I make any final decisions on what to change next. So, so there's the gouache version, which from a distance looks great. From close up, just looks very messy. But let's take a look now at a watercolor version of this and how to approach it in the opposite way of thinking. So I began by putting some color into the caramel, some yellow ochre and dropped in some Indian yellow, and then a little more yellow ochre. So I'd have that glow at the end, the tips, and then mixed up a brown with transparent red oxide and French ultramarine to start to paint the rest of the chocolate. Now, what I wanted to do was join the chocolate and the background. A lot of times I see people painting and they're like, yeah, I'm just going to paint this part of the, the subject matter here and then I'm going to add the background. And they don't really consider how it's going to join to it. I wanted to have no white at the top of the chocolate. And the way to do that is to join the background right now. And you'll see how this turns into a black background later. But for the moment, I just wanted to get rid of that white up at the top and establish that background 
so that the chocolate and the background at least exist in the same universe, because otherwise we're going to end up with a hard line around the outside edge when we try to join the chocolate color and the black color later on in the painting. So I've added in the shadows underneath as well, so I can have a very light shadow on the table. Dried it completely, and I always make sure I feel it to make sure there's no warping left. If there's any warping, that usually means there's still some water in the paper, even if you don't feel wetness. And then I started painting in my chocolate. Now I'm going to be painting a couple layers of this. There are people who can choose the right, exact right brown in the first pass and be satisfied with that. I am not that person because I'm always adjusting things, but that does mean I have to be more careful so that when I paint over top of it, that I don't get a double edge for each of my shapes. So it's worth trying to learn how to do that on the first try rather than on the third and fourth try like I do. So just kept mixing up various types of browns as I went using the same colors that are already in my painting because I didn't want to add anything new. And I've just looked at the photograph to get those same dark shapes, establishing that top shelf and bottom shelf with their dark areas in them. And I'm a little looser with it, of course, here than I am with the gouache because it's a little less controllable when you're talking about watercolor. But I also love the fact that all these colors are just mixing together and blending and kind of looking drippy just because they are watercolor. And that gives the the interior of the caramel just a kind of a little exciting feel to it because it's got all this mixing of colors. But now I can switch to a smaller brush and then also to thicker paint. And that's going to start establishing some of the real darks in the chocolate itself. And I, I do the first pass as much as I can with a bigger brush because the bigger brush you use, the looser your painting is going to be. And I like a looser touch to my painting. I like it when the detail doesn't come in till later and then I can control exactly where it is rather than ending up painting everything with a tiny brush, which just makes everything look like it's been labored over. And as soon as I get to large areas, I switch back to my larger brush. So establishing these really nice darks as I go, uh, using the brown and then dropping in where needed, some Payne's blue-gray that is one color that I added in. I could have mixed a dark, you know, dark grayish black color using the transparent red oxide and the French ultramarine but decided for the sake of speed, because I wanted to keep this painting moving while it was still wet, then I would use Payne's Blue Gray. And that's one of the things that I often will do is just, uh, that's why I have Payne's Blue Gray in my palette is when I'm trying to work quickly and I just need a quick dark, that one works. And I, I find that blacks tend to feel really dark and black and they feel a little bit dead in my painting. So working through adding more darks into the rest of the caramel section so that I can start pulling, pulling together the fact that this is stuck into the chocolate, that it's on the inside. So it has to have some areas that are as dark. But again, I'm looking at the shapes in this one since I've already painted it in gouache and I've, I also had already sketched it in pencil before I even started any of this, I'm very familiar now with these shapes. And the gouache really helped me to solidify what a lot of this looks like in my brain. So by the time I got to the watercolor, then uh, it was much easier to work on. Now, sometimes I do a watercolor sketch before I go to gouache because gouache takes me longer than watercolor will. But in this particular case, I knew I could get really lost in trying to do something crazy with this watercolor version if I didn't do the gouache first. So I needed kind of a slower study. The black color I'm using here is a mixture of, again, the same colors I used in the chocolate I'm using the French ultramarine blue with the transparent red oxide. And I painted it around, negative painting around the top of the chocolate so that I can end up with that edge being a hard white edge. But on the right side, where I want that dark part of the chocolate to 
be part of the background to disappear into it. I painted that right over top of the chocolate. And that allowed me to join those two pieces. You see how that worked out to have that initial painting in the first place so that it starts to just pull it all together and things don't end up looking like a sticker because some edges can disappear into the background this way. Now I'm going back in with a little bit of a brighter color with more of the brown in it rather than just the brown with the blue so I could get a, a better color for the chocolate. And using my smaller brush, I can start adding in small details, small, leaving small highlights while I darken other areas and put all those finishing touches into the painting. So I've added in a reaffirmation of the shadow shapes and stuff that are underneath of the chocolate. And then we get off to my favorite part, which is always pulling off the tape, just getting those nice white edges makes me happy. It makes me feel like the painting is done. And so this one then I compared to my gouache painting and you can see they both look very realistic. The backgrounds are different because watercolor just does a washier type of background instead of a solid one. They both have different levels of detail on the inside of the caramel, but they both look realistic. The average person is never going to look at your artwork and put their nose right up to the piece of paper and say, wow, look at that blend that you didn't blend well. No one's going to do that. It's only you doing it. So step back from your artwork. I talk about that in my previous video as well. That one's a little more beginner friendly. So please do check that out. There's a link in the doobly-doo and be encouraged that whether you paint, whether you use alcohol markers, whether you use colored pencils, whatever you do, Give yourself grace to let perfection go because perfection is not needed. Later on this morning, in just a couple hours, I'm going to be hosting an edu Zoom, educational Zoom call. I'm doing one of these a month. And this month, we're going to talk about pencil and graphite, give you some tips, some tricks, just little fun things for those who like to draw. Pick up the link over in the events tab at Art Venture. And link to Art Venture is down below in the doobly doo. Next up, quick heads up for those at Patreon who are in the $10 and up levels. This month's watercolor video is going to be peonies, a beautiful bouquet of flowers. So check that out in a couple hours. That's going to be on Patreon. If you'd like to join the patrons, link in the guess where doobly doo down below the video. Finally, a little peek at what is coming in my next video is a little tiny box of treats that I got from a new partner that I am going to be working with this year. I'm very excited to open this up and see what's in my little care package. So come back on Tuesday and check it out with me. I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.